Hey, GW coming to you live once again, as live can be, or on demand on your YouTube channel. That's where you'll find me. Okay, as promised, we are going to review that movie, Society. But first, I want to tell you about a movie I just watched. Um, it's called Evil Ed. I don't know if many of you heard about this film. It was released, I'd say, mid-90s, maybe. Got a little light on the subject. But yeah, mid-90s. Released in 2020 from Arrow Video. You guys can check that thing out. Anyway, this is a love letter to splatter films of the 80s. Reanimator, you know, Halloween, you name it, Evil Dead. It's a tribute to, this mo to, the, to those movies. So what, the, what is this film about, guys, you ask? Well, it's about a... And by the way, before I even get into the synopsis of the movie, it's not to be taken seriously. It's a fun movie. It's a splatter movie. But it does have elements of black comedy with it. The one thing, like I said, do not take this film seriously. And this is actually a foreign film. I believe it's Germany or... It's from Germany or... You know, one of those European countries. I'm not sure which one because I didn't do a lot of research on it. But regardless, it's about... A cat named Edward, who is a film editor who edits comedies and romance movies and everything but horror. Well, he is asked to review splatter films and cut out the elements of splatter films that basically are too extreme for some viewers. And things go okay for the first couple of seconds. Ed, Edward's on the job. And then he gets driven mad. He starts to hallucinate. You know, if you watch the preview for it, you'll see him cutting a loaf of bread and then looking down and then it's a severed arm. Basically, Edward goes mad and then it becomes one of the... I would say... One of the uh, splatter films of the 80s. It kind of transcends that. That deal. Um, the makeup, like I just mentioned, is from Evil Dead. And, you know, films like Vamp. So it does owe a lot to those films. Also, you know, if you watch closely, there's a green green syringe, just like in Reanimator. So it, it sort of tributes those movies, as I just said. Again, you know, you can't take a film like this seriously. But, uh... The one thing is, it, it is a fun watch, and it actually has, the original cut was around 80 minutes long. And the cut I saw was the uncensored version, which is 99 minutes long. So, a lot of stuff was pulled out of the original, because, again, you know, video nasties, you know, you were forced to cut some stuff. That being said, the actors in here... I don't really know too well, like I said, because this is a foreign film. Now, in the process of Ed going mad, he gets guidance from, I guess, a character on one of the films he edited in the form of, we'll just call him the figure because I don't know his name. And he tells Ed basically to... You know, we're happy with your work, keep killing, whatever. Ed has a wife and a daughter who get involved in it. And then it becomes sort of a Halloween-ish sort of deal where, you know, the strong female lead versus the splatterific killer. The one thing that shocked me is as campy as this movie is, and it really is campy, it is very, very splattery, and it is un-PC to the max. Basically... You know, there's stuff in this movie that you probably won't see, you know, in, in movies to come. And uh, the acting is pretty much overdone, overcooked, and it adds to the campiness of the film, guys. So really, you're not, uh, you're not losing too much. The other thing that you'll notice as, is if you watch a lot of the stuff that I recommended, Meet the Feebles... You know, Dead Alive. You know, those old Peter Jackson splatter flicks. This one kind of fits as a mediocre entry into those... To that canon, if you will. There is a lot of 
splatter stuff in there. The end of it, I'm not going to reveal too much of the story because, like I said, it is a fun ride. Um, there is some really cool splatter effects toward the end of the film. And it has all your, you know, blown up cliches of the 80s, you know, overacting. And it has every type of character. You have the weak female lead who's running from the killer. You have the boyfriend who is brave, but not as brave to take down the killer, but he tries. You have a SWAT team who are just pure badasses until they start getting picked off one by one. And then you have Ed, who embodies every killer from the 80s and stealing lines from them as well. In one line, he says, "You're coming. they're coming to get you, Barbara. Straight out of the Night of the Living Dead. So you can tell this cat doesn't get away from the TV. So if this cat would have just taken a walk in the, you know, in the woods and took in some nature scenes, we wouldn't have this movie. But if you're a Splatter fan and you want to see something completely off the wall, campy, and in the form of Evil Dead meets Dead Alive, you know, definitely check out Evil Ed. I, I was looking at the sleeve of the film and I can't figure out when it was made, but um, definitely take a look at the Arrow video. It's on sale or it's at on sale at uh, amazon.com definitely give it a whirl it is one of the more what's the word i'm looking for unique splatter films because it it tries to overdo itself it never takes itself seriously and uh the rubber the rubber monster effects weren't even that bad in the film i thought they were pretty good as ed starts to hallucinate there's a scene with a sort of gremlin type creature in his in his refrigerator that scene was done pretty well and even if they did animatronics on it which i don't know if they did or not very cool a lot of blood like i said a lot of overdoing and it's just it's a fun movie but know what you're getting into it it's not meant to be taken seriously it's just a tribute to all these movies the filmmakers actually uh interesting point of trivia the filmmakers, when they were making this, in the original film, the 80-minute or 88-minute cut film that I told you about just a second ago, cut a lot of stuff out. And there's a newly added scene, which Ed's wife is wearing a wig. Now, you don't see her switch wigs in the entire film. So, at a confrontation between her and Ed, he pulls off her wig, and... Like, casual viewers like myself who don't know about that scene, you're pretty much left in the dark on why. There is a special feature where they took out a lot of stuff about her where she wanted to change wigs, you know, randomly throughout the day, you know, to look more uh, upscale, if you will. So that's a little point of trivia. There's also a lot of other stuff in there you could find, you know, relating to other horror films, Easter eggs and whatnot. Definitely give Evil Ed a whirl. He is, It's one of the more, like I just said, unique films of the 80s. And as well as one of the most campy films. And it is a love letter, not to be taken seriously, to splatter films across the 80s. Now, as I promised you, we're going to talk about one of the strangest body horror films of the 80s. Early 90s. And... I'm talking about none other than Society. Released on the public in 1989, this was Brian Yunza, probably one of his more famous directorial debut, or more famous films, if not his directorial debut. Now, Brian Yunza, if you guys don't know, give you a little backstory on him, was the producer of Stuart Gordon's Reanimator. Classic tale of Herbert West bringing stuff back to life. Went a little crazy and spawned three or two sequels. Bride of Reanimator and Beyond Reanimator. And he produced Return of the Living Dead Part 3. Which is the one where the chick turns into the ultimate zombie killing machine. And there's some memorable characters in there such as the Riverman and... Some other classic zombies, but we're not going to get into that right now. We're talking about this one. This one surprised me because of the ending. 
which I'm still not going to ruin for you guys. But it's about Billy Whitney. And Billy Whitney has a unique sort of situation going on for him. You see, Billy Whitney lives in the very rich section of town. And he's just an ordinary kid. He's not rich. He's not an upscale yuppie snob. No, he's a regular dude. Okay? So when this film starts, it kind of... It kind of goes on a weird turn because he finds an audio tape of his sister's coming of age party where it sounds like an orgy with monsters. And what happens through the movie as Billy slowly starts to unravel this mystery, weird things start happening. He catches a glimpse of his sister in the shower, but her head's turned backwards. You know, little things like that that make the viewer kind of want to pay attention. So Brian Johnson knew exactly what he was doing. He kind of strung you along so that you wouldn't lose interest in this film. And he also figures out that everyone around him, he starts to get the idea that something monstrous is going on right underneath his nose. It's kind of like, you know, another way to put it is the blue velvet. Where, you know, everything looks nice and cool at the top, but the minute you go and start to explore, you see the dark side of things. And if you guys don't know that metaphor, if you watch Blue Velvet, it was basically about a guy who lives in a nice town. But as soon as you get involved, you find Dennis Hopper, who was one of the most sinister villains, you know, play, played by Frank Booth, or Dennis Hopper played Frank Booth, rather. And it's the same deal as that. So Billy starts kind of panicking and wondering what's going on. And the more he delves into this, the more crazy the film gets. And it ultimately builds to one of the most unforgettable body horror endings you will ever see. In fact, I've seen this movie about two years ago. I can replay that scene in my head over and over and over and over again. Now, there was supposed to be a sequel to this film, and it never came to light. But I'll tell you what, this film society is huge over in Europe and Germany. They ate that shit up like it was popcorn. You know, they love this stuff. The thing about it, though, is it's a slow burn movie to the very end. But like I said, Brian Yunza strings you along... So that basically you have to pay attention to this thing. And you're in for a treat. I mean, and it's not just Billy's sister that's contorting differently that he kind of sees. It's everybody around him. So you got, you got a couple of things going on here. You get a mystery on what's really going on in the town. You get paranoia. You get Billy trying to figure out what's going on. And there's a lot of other stuff too. His one friend in here... I forget who he's played by. But the character gets killed and then comes back to life the next day. You know, and Billy's like, you're dead. And he's like, I was never dead. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And this movie was meant to be a social commentary uh, on the way that things are portrayed. And uh, this is very underrated. This, this film is very underrated. And... Um, what I can say <laughs> is that the effects or the the effects in this film are phenomenal, especially toward the last five or ten minutes. And my man Screaming Mad George, who was awesome at this stuff, did a hell of a job on this. And it's one of those ones too that you watch it and at first watch you go, well, weird. But then it sticks in your head. You watch it again. You said that was very cool. So it, it was. It's pretty good. And the film is icky. I'm telling you. Like I said. You watch this. And I don't think I've seen a movie like this. Where it dealt with this kind of stuff. Um, and all the rich people. Seem to have one thing in common. They treat Billy like a second class citizen. You know, they're always putting him down. They're always, you know, telling him he needs to find his part in society and this and that. 
And I think... I think the film deals with a lot more than the horror aspect. And like I said, Brian Yunza coming off of, you know, Reanimator. You guys know how great that film was. It's it's one of the all-time greatest horror films of all time. So, Society is definitely worth your time and effort if you're going to put into it. And it, it, like I said, the ending of it, and I said last week, you will not forget it. And I wish I could reveal it. But I want you guys to go out and check this thing out. Because, like I said, there hasn't been a movie like it. And the monstrous effects are phenomenal. And it makes you really sort of look at rich people and wonder if there is something externally going on. You know, it has that effect. You know, like Jaws made you afraid of the water. Texas Chainsaw Massacre made you afraid of large rural areas and inbred cannibal killers, you know. Wrong Turn made you afraid of going to the into the woods. Sleepaway Camp and Friday the 13th made you afraid of going to summer camp when you were a kid. You know what I mean? Piranha made you afraid of jumping in the lake and swimming around because, you know, you might get chewed up, you know. American Werewolf in London made you afraid of walking in the moonlight. You know what I mean? But this film makes you afraid or leery of rich people. So, I can't say enough about this film, because when I saw it, it stuck with me. And few films do that, you know. Alive is one of them. You know, 120 Days of Sodom, that's another one. You know, and, and this film. They, they just stick in your head for some reason, and I can't figure it out. But I think that's what the intent was, to make you think. And that's a good film. If it entertains you and makes you think, and it's unforgettable, that's a cool film. So... Definitely check out Society. As I mentioned last week, it is on Shutter on uh, The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs Season 1. So, on that note, check it out. Um, and I hope you I hope you enjoy it. You know, I hope you guys like the two films I talked about today. You know, definitely give it a whirl. And Arrow Video, if you guys don't know, just announced they were going to put out Kevin Smith's second, second feature, Mall Rats. September 29th of 2020. And if their releases are... If that release is as good as any release they put out, it's going to be phenomenal. And if you guys really haven't seen Mall Rats, check out my Jersey Trilogy Part 1. I know, I know, I got to get to Part 2, and we will. But, um, you know, right now I'm stuck on the 80s horror kit, guys. I can't help it. So definitely check out... Evil Ed for the campiness factor as well as the gore and splatter. And definitely check out Society because that horror film is different, like I said, than any other horror film I've seen. It doesn't deal with slashers. It doesn't deal with killers. It does deal with monsters, but it also deals more with psychological stuff. Definitely give those two a whirl. GW, have a great weekend. Enjoy the films.